media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The South African Football Association's development agency is urging corporate companies to partner and invest in its football-based SAFAR program, which aims to encourage youth to engage in life skill programs through the use of football. Creamer Media was invited to the sites of the latest Safe Hub in Alexandra in Johannesburg. The Safe Hub program, which is modelled after non-government organisation Amandla Edgy Football's Safe Hub in Cape Town, hopes to repeat the original program success of reducing crime-related incidents by 44% and improving learners' maths and English pass rates by 49%. There are Safe Hubs operating in Kailicha and in Guguletu in the Western Cape, and one funded by the entertainment group Zogo Sun in Deep Slut in Kateng. Well, the Safa Safer project is actually the IP of Amanda AG Football, who we've partnered with in terms of building safe hubs across the country. This one falls in line with the partnership with Amanda as this is Safa's first official safe hub in, in, in Johannesburg. The safe hub consists of obviously an artificial turf where the social development aspect of the program comes into play. Uh, it's got a main building as well, which offers uh, a variety of things. Uh, the, the whole point of the, of, the, of the Safe Hub itself is to create a safe uh, space and environment for community members and kids within the community. Well, the total cost of this project for Phase 1, which is artificial turf, is 7.7 .7 million. It's being funded by Total Sports. They've actually, as well, they're funding football development at a further 5.4 million rand a year per annum for the next four years in, in the whole Johannesburg region. Synthetic sports services company Synthsports is undertaking the installation of the pitch for the project. Synthsport contract manager Daniel Creighton tells us more. We're building a synthetic soccer field, okay, and the processes that, uh, that we've done so far is uh, we've completed a, um, a demolition item, so there was various buildings and stands on the site uh, that, that have been um, demolished now and taken off, uh, and then we've cleared and stripped the site and now we are uh, we're currently busy with a cut and fill okay so uh, we've uh, we've cut down with the in-situ material and we're currently filling up with it um, to to achieve the, the the levels of the roadbed preparation and uh, and then we're going to start importing a g5 material construction uh, began uh, mid mid to late april and it's uh, it's expected to finish at the end of july now we're building a FIFA two-star synthetic soccer field. It'll be suitable for, for, for 11 a side soccer and uh, potential to play also 5 a side soccer. Up to this stage, we're about 200,000 Rand in, in, in what we've put back into the, the community. Um, well, we've gone through the process of, of employing a labor force directly. Um, so we've empowered individual people from the community rather than uh, let's say individual businesses. Yeah, so the labourer takes home what he what he makes on his wage. The SDA and Amandla Edu Football also hope to roll out 100 safe hubs throughout the country by 2030, one in each district and more than one in densely populated areas. The current future sites we have at the moment will be breaking ground on the 1st of April next year with two sites, one in Matlosana, the NDPG, uh, one in Soweto Jablani through the JDA, we're currently in Cape Town already on another site. Um, we have identified two in the Northern Cape through Kumba Aino and we'll be converting the Nike Center in Soweto as one of, a, of one of our safe subs as well. Corporates can get involved by obviously a, a number of ways, either through the core funding of the whole thing, which is funding the whole build of the, of the facility itself, or funding the operational costs that run at about 3.2 million a year to, to, to run proper safe up. Other news making headlines this week, TNPA luring private oil services investors to Saldana with flexible terminal concessions. Metier reports lower margins and higher revenue. And modernization of steel plants crucial in South Africa. Transnet is optimistic of receiving positive responses to a tender for the development of an offshore supply base for the oil and gas industry in Saldana Bay. The flagship development is clearly the oil and gas support hub that we would like to build at the port of Saldana and it encapsulates three large projects. The first of these is um, the creation of an offshore supply base. Um, it's marked on your slides as OSSB, and that offshore supply base is a facility that is meant to service the offshore um, oil and gas exploration facilities uh, you know, out, uh, you know, out in the Atlantic. The services in this facility are going to include a range of aspects such as uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the supply of those vessels, 
any kind of fabrication that needs to be done and taken through to those vessels, things like crew change. So this is basically a land base that then forms a logistic supply platform to all the exploration that's going out in the open ocean. Um, we find that there's a very strong business case for this, and we are hoping that, uh, you know, of the many tenders that have now applied for the concession, uh, you know, that within the short space of time and by the end of uh, uh, this year being roughly December, we should be identifying a prospective candidate. JC listed Sepaku Holdings, mixed concrete subsidiary, Metier, increased its revenue 13% to 874 million rand in the year to March 31st but subdued demand from the construction industry, resulting in prices remaining flat year on year. Our revenue has increased, as I have already said, from 919 to 2.3 2 billion, in spite of the difficult competitive forces that we've been dealing with. And our EBITDA for the 12-month period was at 22% compared to 14% last year. As we've announced last year, that the moment we hit our steady state, the biggest next focus is going to be optimization. That process has now begun, and we have been in the middle of it as we speak. We have been able to, just by optimizing raw material composition, we've been able to increase capacity by, to 2.8 million tons. That just means we've got, um, we are producing at, uh, at much lower refs, even if we're not producing the 2.8 million tons, we're producing less than that, but at much lower refs, more efficiently. SMS Group South African MD Peter Bezadenhout said the modernization of South African steel plants was crucial in boosting the industry's ability to remain internationally competitive in a difficult economic environment. Yes, I think uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges that uh, the local steel plants in South Africa has got is that the plant in South Africa is relatively old if compared to some of the other plants that we're building today in terms of uh, not only in age but in terms of the technology and the technology development that's happened over the last years. <coughs> um, so first of all, um, our local steel producers has got the challenge of lower, much lower uh, Chinese steel prices coming into the market and they've got plants that's running at uh, very different operating costs. Um, uh, so if you've got a plant that's continuously trying to, the sales price being driven down, they have to reduce their operating costs, it's very difficult for them to focus on, on modernizing their, their capital equipment. Um, and we think that if our plants in South Africa, the steel producers in South Africa, is going to compete with the international level, at some stage they have to start looking at modernization of the plants um, and, and modernization of the assets that they've got to improve those efficiencies. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.